Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. That's what I expect generally. Thank you for the kind introduction. It's, I'm deeply honored and in a way considered as a great privilege for me to become the opening batsman of this goal talk. When we discuss, I think this has been uh, as uh, honorary, in a way, lifetime president said, uh, you know, yes, we have been discussing, talking, organizing about this, but unfortunately because of this COVID, we could not do that. The whole purpose of this is not to blow my own trumpet, but just to share with you some of the success stories, failures, you know, negatives and positives and things like that for, for e every one of us to understand and learn something. When you leave this place, at least we'll have, I say, this guy has give, given us something like this, or these are the failures, these are the drawbacks kind of thing. Not, not only me, I'm sure next month we'll have a next one. Probably uh, president might address you about uh, looking at from the St. Lucia's point of view. So, when I'm going to uh, blow my own trumpet, I, I also need to have a little bit of uh, points for me to not to miss certain things, so therefore I have jot down certain things. Yes, I'm, uh, you know, from a village called Matara Tihagoda, Kithalagama. You know, it was absolutely a village. I remember because uh, I was born in 1961, 60 years of age, but still young at heart. Physically, psycho psychologically, mentally, biologically, everything is fit. <laughs> Why do I say that? You can see, Haraki. So I am uh, in that caliber, I must tell you. I think my good friend uh, Rex is there. I think we were together in a bowling house for a long time. With the greatest difficulty, we were managing each other. Although we were there in the same, same room. So my parents were basically farmers. Yeah, village people, farmer, you know, my father in the morning, sometime, most of the time he goes to the paddy field. Of course, he had about 50, 60 acres uh, paddy fields, although we call farmer, entrepreneur as well. I also have been going to, whenever, I, you know, I go home, I used to go to uh, paddy fields and we work. So that is the humble beginning. So we had a small school where probably there would have been about 200, 300 people. So I was admitted to that school up to grade three. Even up, even as of to date, I must tell you, I have my connection with the school. I consider that as my number one school. That is the place where they gave me, provided me ayanna ayanna, which is very important. Because people like us, people like you all, probably, if you have not been the school uh, at which, you know, whatever, six schools from the beginning, at least then you would have had another school. I'm sure that, you know, we, we should be humble enough to say that I am a old boy of that school as well. I used to go, I used to meet principal, I used to meet teachers, I used to ask Lukia what kind of thing that you, but we, we help because they need that. Anyway, my family, yes, my father is a very tough character, either my way or highway, although he has been a farmer, because five children, I'm num number two in the family, my sister, another three. My sister is the one who is running one of the fashion, uh, the uh, retail shops here in Sri Lanka. And we, I'm number two, number three also with my sister. Number four, unfortunately, we lost him. He was studying for medical uh, medicine in uh, Russia, but while he was here on holidays, he met with an accident and we lost him. And number four is a doctor in, uh, uh, now practicing in London. He's a GP. I met him about a few days ago. So that's, uh, that's our family. And I also had my turning points in our life, like huge ladies and gentlemen also always have, you know, we have turning points. One is my parents, they were, although they were, I call them as farmers, they were visionary leaders, I must tell you, visionary people. Why do I say that? All five children, all five children from grade three onwards, they had the courage, especially they had the courage. I wouldn't have had the courage for my two children now. They had the courage to send them from village. I remember when my father, I still remember when my father told me very politely, Puta, uh, not a, utter, you know, they don't utter a word of English, totally Sinhala. Puta, make a hariyanne, then Puta, yan no, no, is called. I was vehemently opposed. I said, no, I'm, I want to be with you all. He said, no, doing nothing. So over a period of two weeks, both were able to convince me. So that's how I, uh, I, I 
had the opportunity to go to Richmond. That was our turning point in our life because otherwise if we were there in, in, in the village, because my Lokuta and all them are there, but their children are there, still they are like frog in the well, you know, they are in their own uh, village. But that was the reason that I always consider my parents as visionary and they are, you know, now both are dead and gone, but they had the courage to send. Imagine th grade four, just after grade three, grade four, Jangi and the Neda, so I, I, you know, they are there are people who are looking after, and they only in the morning they come and they know. There are nothing to, uh, I mean, this is the, you know, I, I, we, I was there in the hostel, and our culture in the village is very simple and humble. Even that simple and humble is my motto in my life always. Although I'm a tough person in certain things, but I'm very simple and humble. That part I must tell you. Because my mother was the driving force, I must tell you. Always, my father is a little bit of a lethargic guy, always would like to have a sleep in the afternoon after, you know, the heavy meal. But my mother is the one who always pushed my father to put these people, in, children, into best schools. I went to Richmond, my sister went to Sangamit earlier, and then, of course, then uh, she, she went back to, uh, uh, you know, the Sujata. And then my brother also was with me. Of course, he's not like me, little mischievous guy. And uh, the guy who, whom, uh, who died was at Rahula, Matara, and my youngest was in Nananda College, Colombo. So that's, that's the education that my parents gave. I always, every morning, when I worship, I remember them. So, because I, we wouldn't have been here if not my parents, so that, which is very important. So, parents, we, we looked after very well, I must tell you. We looked after very well, whatever possible we did. So no, uh, no this thing about, uh, you know, that uh, I know sometimes when you look at read papers, you can see children are well educated and professionally qualified, but parents are at elders' homes. But we did not do that. So, and then the next era, the dawn of the new era, because Richmond, second of April 1971, I was admitted to. Tata Giamavate, had a car, Austin Graham Ridge, 1513, I remember he went and then went with another person. Of course, he had contacts, that's how, otherwise, you know, it's very difficult for us to get into a place like that. And went and then met principal Mr. Valikala at that time. I think we imagine the village, Kollek, Kavila, Richmond, all English speaking people are coming with suitcases and Humber cars and uh, Rex. Matagaine and, and all these things, you know, we were totally out, totally out. But then I was also watching what's going to happen. But uh, I could not bear it up a couple of days. Then father again came and took me home because crying like nothing. It's reading that I can't stay because one thing, adaptability is important. Whatever, wherever we are, you know, adaptation is important. It's very difficult, very hard, but we got to do that. So which is very important. And then... Uh, Students were smart. I was not smart. I was totally out. And then I was watching. I was watching what's going to happen, whether I'm going to be fit into that culture, which is very important. So we all need to make sure that, you know, we fit into that culture. And uh, especially English-speaking environment. So it's very difficult. Nowadays what happens is, you know, most of the people, yes, they are even my own profession, the more, most important thing is the language, communication skills. When you have, if you have communication skills, sky would be the limit. But if you don't have that, always you will become a back, back, backbencher. Rex also, Rex is seated there, backbencher. I think he's not a backbencher, but also, I, always he's a frontrunner. Rex, I take you as always example, my young, you know, we were together, you know, we had a lot of things to share, which I don't want, because certain things I can't say that, because he will say, oh, Boruki Anigela. Uh, and uh, life in Richmond, solid 10 years. I think that's another turning point in my life because that is where I studied a lot of things other than my academic uh, things. Especially my, I said, adaptability to a different environment and get on with different kind of people, especially uh, students, my own schoolmates, college mates, and my, my classmates, and teachers. So that is very important for us, how we are going to get on with this.
because we, we and also, you know, we were, uh, I was, the first few months I was uh, staying in a, in a, you know, the boarding house, then uh, that was at Elliot Road, next to, close to Mahinda. Uh, the one day when I was going to school, I was in grade four, I lost my way. I totally lost my way the third day or fourth day. I couldn't find my boarding house while, while I was returning. Why are you laughing? I mean, imagine grade four guy, right? Not like, uh, you know, today. And then, uh, fire, then uh, my boarding mistress, Silva Kiela, Mr., uh, you know, there was a guy, uh, he was in the band also in uh, Mahinda. And uh, they found me a lady, very old lady. It is not a taxi, I will again. Lady, that lady takes my bag. I was following her. And in the afternoon also, she comes and stays there at the gate. And then I go with uh, her. That was fantastic experience. Funds were very limited. Because that is where we learn how to manage funds. Because my father gives me, she, he comes or my mother comes every other week and gives some, you know, small amount for tuck shop, pocket money, you know. I was, you know, my brother was with me. My brother is a guy, you know, he spends lavishly. So I am totally out of funds. So I used to complain my father. Right? No, that is how we started looking at our savings, how you manage with whatever the money we have in our mind, in our, in our wallet. So that's very important. And loneliness has been there always. But, you know, we, I knew that, look here, one fine day, I had to get out from this mentality, which is very important. And gradually, gradually I embrace the whole thing, discipline and many more things at Richmond. Over a period of time, then I also started thinking and looking at, now only I feel that, about, about uh, leadership skills, leadership qualities, how to become a leader, how to compete with your own, uh, you know, the, your own colleague, your own uh, friend in a school, in, the, in, 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 a, in a classroom. How do, how, how do you become uh, number one? So it's very difficult. But then I knew that today I'm talking about in strategic management terms that your own friend is your own enemy if you are in the same competitive business. But that day also, we would have had the same enemy next seated next to me because we were competing each other to become number one or number two or number three in the class. But we have been doing it. So without our knowledge, what's the time period going to be? Half an hour? Okay, because I have quite a lot to say. Anyway, without our knowledge, so we, we, we started competing each other, which is very important. Hostel life was fantastic. Then after that, I went to hostel because that was, uh, that was compulsory for you to stay in the hostel. Then I went to the hostel, lower boarding, small one. Big fellows were always looking at us because we were something, you know, little dangme kaluna ekali sudhu boys. You know, that uh, it's, it's a way, with the greatest difficulty, we were able to... Uh, manage many things. I think that I don't have to explain. But time management. I'm a very, very strict time manager even as of now. I must tell you, ladies and gentlemen, wherever I go, certain cases only a uh, golf club, you know, I compromise. None of the other places I compromise my time. That is how I, I, I've been brought in through uh, my hostel experience because from, from 4.30, Till 9 o'clock sometime in the evening, 4.30 uh, in the morning, till 9.30, it's like uh, army training. Set rules. So there are no compromising that, which is very important. So I studied my time management. Even now, most of the places I do that, and some people don't like it because they don't want to, uh, they don't want to manage their time. I am a strong believer about time management, and I am a strong believer... If I am a busy person, I manage my time. If I am a busy person, I know how to manage time. But if I am not a busy person, then obviously, you know, I have enough time to waste, which we should not do that. So therefore, there is a saying that even if you want to get something done, you must go to a most busiest person, busiest consultant, then they will make sure that, like Ananda, you know, you must go to uh, him to get a work done. Uh, so you must pay me something because I promote you. And uh, also, uh, roughing, rough out, lot of things, cleanliness, all that I have, uh, you know, le learned from hostel. And then later, of course, I was there during my, uh, my 10 years. I have been there in about 10 boarding houses, including me and uh, Rex was there in one of the places or two places, all the others, you know, little time. Even parents were not aware, you know, where we were, because no phones, no mobile phones, nothing. 
So, but one thing, we manage ourselves properly. We manage. That is very important. My parents never knew what we were doing. But nowadays, it's very hard. They never knew because they don't have, uh, mo you know, the mobile phones, neither they have land phones. And once in two, two uh, weeks, they come and see us. Sometimes when they go to the boarding place, they say, nah, putala vena koi hari Then they were looking at us because we, uh, you have to only send a letter that say in Tata, api place maarugara. So that, but uh, what I'm trying to say is, you know, we were able to manage ourselves, discipline, which is very important. Otherwise, we could have been a mischievous guys, but we didn't want. Fortunately, I was fortunate enough, lucky enough, not to get into that trap. But of course, you know, we had enough other friends we have been doing uh, that. I, if you ask me whether I have done any sports, I did uh, only swimming. I was a great swimmer. I have not done any other sports, I must say. Of course, you know, every, every, every uh, uh, afternoon when we were in the hostel, we did enough sports, but not up to the school level or inter whatever the level, but sports activities, uh, uh, the, the uh, swimming, I have done quite a lot, including my life-saving Father Morley, I remember from uh, uh, LOCS, you know, and also Father Mark, whenever we had something, we go to Father Mark and then get our treatments done. So that is that still uh, we remember because we didn't have money. And uh, uh, warden and all that, you know, my God, terrible nuts, I must say. No bloody nonsense those days. So therefore, we were able to at least manage. So slowly learning everything. And I became a hostel monitor, class monitor, then sub prefect, prefect. So those are the uh, leadership uh, skills that gradually over a period of time I have been able to, you know, uh, get, which is very important. Because then when you become a monitor, when you become a prefect, sub prefect, prefect, you are supposed to become, a, you know, supposed to be a disciplined person. And you can't have any, any, any hanky panky. Because uh, it's very important. Lasanta, you may remember. So I think we always, we have, we have done it. So then I did my A-levels. That's another turning point. Because all, we all have turning points. I uh, wanted to do science. So I told my tata, tata mama me vidya vishyan valin karan na kamati. Itin tata ki wa now you are a dango ala me lukula me ikne. Wala me toragan no na dia. Then I wanted to do science. Then I went to science. That was, I think, I block KK. I was there about two months. But then I realized that that was not my forte. Because then I told my Tata again, Tata, it's difficult. Mommy, think I'll have a chemistry current. So then I selected commerce stream. That is where, you know, my, my, that was my turning point again. Because then commerce, I knew that, okay, because I, uh, it was really, uh, uh, important thing for me because uh, I like commerce in the sense commerce means not the subject per se but finance and many more things which, which is very important and uh, then I left the school in 1980 and 19 I was there at home about little over one year and I had to do second time also but I could not get into the university but there I can understand because degree alone is not the important thing because although I did not do degree, I had a lot of my friends who did degree, but though they are with all due respect to them, but they don't do that much of work the way that I do it. They, have, they could not climb the ladder, so what I say is degree alone is not the end of the world, so, which is important. Now, later I realize it when I started my professional career. That's another turning point, because I started uh, my chartered accountancy, and uh, I thought that Actually, one of my good friends, Jagat, uh, you know, still he is a good friend. He is the one who, who informed me, Machang, there is something like that. Why not we? We both started doing chartered accountancy. And you won't believe early morning from Matara, I come to Colombo. And from Colombo again, I'm going back, uh, you know, Saturday and Sunday. That was a very, very difficult, but we had to do it. And then I came to Colombo. So then that's the turning point. I came to Colombo and then settled down in a place where I still am working at the same place, not that working. I am the managing partner there. I started my career in, way back in 1983 as a row audit trainee drawing 300 rupees. So started chartered accountancy, very difficult, English medium, and Greek. I have to tell you the truth. 
But then I knew that, you know, my main, main difficult and the drawback that time was my, my English. It's quite obvious. So then came to Colombo, all in English uh, medium. So what do I do? I took up that challenge. Then I started my English uh, education at Aquinas College. I uh, went for two years. And then when I finished, I knew that, you know, at least I was able to stand. And I was able to speak little. That is, I think, which, uh, very important. Of course, now today, if you take, I have got my two daughters. They both have done their elocution well. They both have got their, uh, you know, the, uh, so many things in elocution and many more things. So then that's how, that was the era then. But now everyone is having that. And uh, then only I, I knew about the uh, education, English education. Then while I was doing my uh, training, I, I, I knew that, you know, I can't, every time I can't ask from, uh, ma money from my father, I wanted to apply for a job. Sampath Bank, I applied, and immediately I got the job. So that time when I was drawing 500 rupees, this was 5,000 rupees. 5,000. So I was, I thought, my God, superb. Then I, I informed my father. My father said, no, you come home. Karnakala get there, And he said, nah. In other words, you know, that is what I am telling you, he was a visionary leader. He knew that, you know, I am going to become a chartered accountant and he knew that, he, he said that, okay, he can look, uh, look after me. So, our monkey was either my way or highway tamai. Those days, then when I was telling my daughter, look here, why not, tata, why not to, uh, I told uh, Puta, why not to do chartered accountancy, then she asked me, why? Why do you want me to do that? I mean, this simple question, that's the generation gap. I said, no, you're not doing post-mortem work, no, uh, Tata. I got, I got a shock. The auditing and all that, you know, those are all boring things. You know, is it my second daughter? No, Tata, it's boring. I don't want to do that. So there's no option. So, but those days, I mean, that's a, that's a cultural difference, the, 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 the difference. So, but anyway, I, I started. Then I said, no, doing nothing. So that was my turning point. Otherwise, I would have become a bank, bank uh, CEO or someone. But because of chartered account, I completed chartered accountancy. And then I became a chartered accountant. And as a result of that, I have been able to become a president of the Institute of Chartered Accountants. But that is also because my vision. Each one of us, I think, I believe that we have our vision. But I never ever compromise my vision, even as of to date, I never compromise my vision. When I set up my target, I always go for that. I never compromise. One of my golden rules in my life is never ever compromise your vision, but compromise for your vision. Compromise for your vision. I hope that you understand. A simple example. record This is a simple thing. I didn't have a girlfriend, I must tell you, in school. I, 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 I was very weak in that uh, delete, not like you. So, uh, I was very weak. And of course, I had one girlfriend when I was in Mathara. And uh, I told her, that is where I'm going to connect my, my uh, you know, the, whether you compromise your vision. I said, look here, I want to go to Martha, go, Colombo. I want to start my uh, studies and professional studies. You are not happy. I said, then either my way or my way. But then we have to take a part. So that's what the, I, I never compromised my vision uh, to come to Colombo and continue my studies. By I compromise for my vision. I hope you understand. This is a simple example. So therefore... Ladies and gentlemen, always you need to have your vision. So even now, when I wanted to become so many things, you know, I set my targets and I always go for that and I don't compromise uh, that. So which is very important. But our, our, our vision has to be very reasonable. Otherwise, if you ask me, look, I would like to become a president of this country. Technically, yes. Practically, no. So that I think that's how we had to look at. So whatever vision we have, we need to make sure that, okay, we, uh, whether it is practical enough for you to uh, you, you to understand and achieve it, which is very important. And another thing in my life is, I always try to become an indispensable person, wherever. Whether it is your village, whether it is your family circles, whether it is your corporate sector, my firm, my school, wherever I go, I become an indispensable person. Then everyone will look for you. Everyone will ask opinion from you. 
everyone will expect you to advise by doing that you establish yourself there you conquer the whole thing that is another strategy that i have in my life i have done it i have practiced that and i have proven it that uh, you know that is correct which is very important and uh, always working very hard you can become a indispensable person by coming to office at 9 o'clock and leave him by 4 o'clock i am a very early bird from the inception i am very even as of today even today morning i went to office by 7 o'clock i am in the office so by 7 o'clock i am in the office which is very important even i am the i am the i mean the head of uh, the institution now but i go to office very early and my accuracy efficiency is very important interpersonal skills is another thing which i always practice i'll i'll come to that later because you 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 need to have your networking ability how many of us i know with young generation and they talk to their 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 friends only but in my case i always go out and try to at least inter- get myself introduced to at least another four five uh, new new people over a period of time i have got so many thousands and thousands of uh, people and most of the ceos in this country is very much known and we are, i'm i'm in a position to call them by first name is that is something important for our personal development that is something important for our professional development that is something important for our business development ladies and gentlemen which is very important but unfortunately people don't do when you go for cocktail what do we do you get all of your own buddies and you have a chat whack uh, you know at least 3 4 500 uh, ml and go home that is not the case while you are doing that you need to make sure that you ne- you you meet new people which is important so i have done it and i do it and i have proved that i i i was successful in my uh, place and also when you want to do something you must make sure whether you are in a position to do it i met my wife again she uh, was uh, in my firm i was dreaming about a girl that's my uh, personal thing no i was dreaming about a girl fair little tall long hair this and that one fine day when i was going uh, uh, down at the reception uh, you know to the reception i saw a girl with another gentleman uh, that stuck in my mind i said this is what something i have been looking for I, I, i'm honestly i'm telling you so then i thought oh my then i asked reception why what are they doing he said no sir they are, this father has brought daughter to join the firm i said ah okay so <laughs> so then uh, i was uh, watching her uh, so uh, i knew that then uh, i didn't have any 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 kind of brokers i'm telling you because this is very important i mean how, how we should work i was watching about 3 4 day 3 4 months and i asked one of my friends majang uh, can you see whether this girl has a boy so uh, he spied and he came and said nah right okay that's enough then following day i called her around 7 o'clock 7:30 and i asked her to sit that time i was a manager she was just uh, audit trainee i said look here i'm going to tell you something very important for both of us uh, what is that sir now i i i have some i feel that you know i'm interested in you how do you feel? no my god no i have to ask my father this and but no what i'm trying to say is we should have the courage to do that we should have the courage also we should be in a position to do that kind of thing i'm not talking about these girls and boys whatever we do whatever we do we must see whether we are in a position to do that pass him uncle and don't worry you take your time and uh, maybe after one or two weeks time you come and tell me she came after one week and she said uh, you better ask from my parents then i that 50% is okay the balance 50% then i got uh, my uh, you know the um, prospective father in law's number and then i called sorry i called him and that time he was a very senior civil servant very senior very tough character i knew that uh, call amar heva madhuma he was a scholar and many more he had done lot of things monkey mr heva madhuma i would like to come and see you uh, so yeah what uh, is it regarding what i said regarding something personal okay come uh, tomorrow at 7 o'clock i knew that he was also early bird so i went to his ministry ministry of uh, uh, something and uh, cultural affairs then i went and i i i, I told straight away about my desire and he was very happy number one he was very happy that i had the gut feeling and uh, backbone to come and uh, speak to him he said da puta very good that's good i think uh, did you speak to my daughter i said yes what does he say he said uh, to ask from you ah okay now you are here right okay but puta i am very particular about handa han i said okay doesn't matter you do it and that is how i found my better half 
what I say is, whatever we do, we must have a straight dealings. Then it's very easy. Even business dealings, if you can straight away go and talk to and negotiate things, you know, that's very, very easy in our lives. Anyway, now I'm blessed with two daughters. And, uh, you know, they both, uh, all, three, all three of them studied that Holy Family Con and Bumblebee, well-educated. They are, they are having a good one, one thing, I must tell you. I wouldn't have been here if not there. You know, they compromised a lot. Mamude had and they ran away together. Most of the time, and they know that, of course, I, they know that I don't mess around. And they know that, you know, I'm at least working for something and working for the country. I think we have to give something back to our, our people who, who has helped us. My parents, I looked after my parents very well. There are no question. Everybody knows that. And I did my part. Of course, it's not only me, my sister and others also. But I was able to do a lot to my parents. Still, I, was, I wouldn't have been able to even pay my debts. But unfortunately, they departed uh, much earlier. So, and my school... And my primary school and secondary school, my firm, my, my profession, and my village, and my corporate sector, I do a lot. It's not uh, for money. We, each one of us, we must try to do something, give something back to uh, the places where you, they have given you at least uh, certain things, which is very important. People don't do that. I never wanted to leave this country. Never. I, w I had enough opportunities. I never, I'm a patriotic. I thought that, look here, you know, people who are living in this country, they are leaving. I'm sorry to tell you, maybe, you know, pardon me for saying that. They go there, but still they are not happy. They are not happy. They become number three or four citizen there. Why are they leaving? There are ten reasons there why are they leaving. In fact, recently when I had a convocation, I told these young boys and girls categorically ten reasons why you should not leave this country, which is very important. So uh, even uh, my, my two children, I, they say, no, we don't want to leave. So that's good in a way, but of course when you look at this, uh, so many things, when you read papers, when you watch Derana TV and all that, you can see a lot what's happening, but sometimes you get disgusted, but still we have to look at and see whether we would like to. Yeah. Another thing is, ladies and gentlemen, important, personal branding. Uh, <clears throat> I'm a, a strong believer about personal branding, because... Because that's important. What is personal branding? Each one of us has a brand, I believe. Yeah. Each one of us. Isn't it? So personal branding means, according to, uh, you know, the, the, the top class people, and Jeb Bezos uh, says, personal brand is something, when people, uh, you know, the talk, something about you when you are not there. The moment that Sujiva Rajapaksha, let us say someone, some people are talking about Sujiva Rajapaksha. How do they perceive me? How do they perceive me as a person? Whether they perceive me, ah, he's a top class guy, he's an honest guy, he's a man with integrity, he's a professional guy, uh, he's, a, he's a, so many things. Oh, no, no, he's another Rajapaksha. He's a, you know, he's up to this. He has done a lot of things. I'll look here, you know, he has accumulated wealth this way. So those are the two things that you need to understand. I never ever wanted to compromise my integrity, my friends. Never wanted to com compromise my integrity. There would have been enough and enough opportunity for me to compromise my integrity, my professionalism, and my vision, which I didn't want to do that. For simple reason, because I want my, my, you know, everybody to say something good about me. And my, my, my wife, my children, my, fam my siblings should never heard, hear anything bad about me. I had enough chances say, my public life. So I was a, a president of the ICSL, and then I was a, a commissioner of uh, Securities Ex Exchange Commission, and now People's Bank and, and uh, you know, People's Leasing and various things. But I was at Sri Lanka Cricket. One of the, one, I, unfortunately, I can't say that because these have been recorded. And uh, it's not, not, a, not a, you know, easy place to get on. But I was there for six and a half years, six and a half years as a treasurer, honorary treasurer. You know, when you are in a treasury position, and you can imagine what's happening. But not a single day, not a single cat, you know, criticized my role, I must tell you. Of course, you know, our single in Kiamat, you know, I think, but that part is there. But my, my family never wanted me to be there, but still. And I was appointed as a 
ട്രഷർ ഓഫ് ശ്രീലങ്ക ക്രിക്കറ്റ് സോറി ട്രഷർ ഓഫ് ശ്രീലങ്ക വേൾഡ് കപ്പ് ഇൻ ട്വന്റി ഇലവൻ അപ്പോയിന്റഡ് ബൈ ഐ സി സി ദാറ്റ് ഈ ബിക്കോസ് ഇറ്റ് വാസ് ദ പ്ലേഡ് ഇൻ ദിസ് സബ് കോണ്ടിനെന്റ് ദി ന്യൂ അബൌട്ട് ഫൈനാൻഷ്യൽ ഡിസിപ്ലിൻ ഹിയർ ഇൻ ശ്രീലങ്ക ദി നെവർ വോണ്ടഡ് ടു ഗിവ് ടു അതർ കൺട്രീസ് ദേ അപ്പോയിന്റഡ് മീ ആസ് ദ ട്രഷർ ആൻഡ് എവ്രിങ് വാസ് ആൻഡ് ഐ ഹാവ് ഹാൻഡിൽ ലാർജ് അമൌണ്ട് ഓഫ് ഡോളേഴ്സ് ദോസ് ദേസ് and i did everything and got the audit done within within a month's time i submitted uh, i went and submitted uh, before the icc exco so i mean when i was dealing with the players like india you can imagine what would have been uh, what would have been the situation but i never wanted i i have been going to uh, indian uh, you know the cricket uh, institution every other week and the moment that i land there the people know that uh, i'm there so there some people come and even knock the door right because these are all large amount of uh, dealings but i never wanted i i when i got in when even now when i get into a place i make up my mind look here don't mess around don't mess around with anything no kitchen talks no finance dealings then it's very easy that's that's what uh, i feel my uh, you know personal branding another thing is ladies and gentlemen your soft skills your soft skills is i am a firm believer about my soft skills my communication skills listening habits your negotiation skills your presentation and now this is this is this itself is a presentation one must be able to come and make a presentation and my my, my body language my the way that uh, my posture how i look at and uh, eye contact these all becomes part of your soft skills which is very important so how many people have critical thinking listening habits and i do have i mentor i mean even now i mentor fairly good number of chartered accountants very young guys who doesn't have that kind of capacities positive attitudes these all are i i i i boast myself i have this each one of us must have this because soft skills people have hard skills now i being a chartered accountant i have my hard skills i should know about my accounting standards my auditing standards my company act my securities exchange act and all the acts i should know because that is your hard skills for you to perform but for you to become a smart smart you know the professional you need to have soft skills A lot of people don't have soft skills how many people can articulate something within a second do we read the papers daily i used to read paper, papers daily because i have to upgrade my knowledge which is very important otherwise you know you are outdated winston churchill winston churchill you know the former prime minister of uh, uk once said today newspaper tomorrow waste paper if you don't read today tomorrow is totally waste paper but that was about couple of decades ago imagine today every hour your your you know uh, knowledge is being changed so therefore you we need to become a good reader good reader mokada eka mage thiyena mama eka karana peoples bank is one of the places you know now these are all uh, uh, you know opposite you know the appointments are done by political politi- political hierarchy which is very important but you need to balance there are so many things that i got to balance nowadays my god from morning till evening about uh, one particular aspect about uh, foreign currency how do i balance every other day i have to pay about 30 40 million us dollars for petrol have we ever s- reduce our, you know the uh using our vehicles no we have not uh, apparently you know it has gone up it has been increased so you had to find dollars how do we do that so that is a huge issue but stress management is important your work life balance is very very important you may remember that about a year ago i think everybody hammered me everybody hammered me a lot of papers were carrying something about me and i i i i, never, I was not a worried uh, person in that because i knew that i was right as long as you do the right thing you don't have to be worried about that my friends right criticism is you know inevitable inevitable you can't help otherwise you should not accept public positions then you mind your own business but no i don't want that to happen i also have my vision i said look here i want to get into certain places some of the attributes i have is my self discipline i am a very you know i'm strict disciplinarian where i do and i challenge myself i always challenge myself and now look here if i challenge myself obviously i can challenge you otherwise if i if i can't challenge me then obviously it's very difficult for me to challenge someone else so there are there are a lot of difficult times 
but then I, I, I challenge myself and ask. Then only I go to the other place. And planning and preparation, consistency is very important. Whatever I do, I, I am being consistent. I can boast myself. You can ask, uh, of course, you know, some of my friends are here. Uh, and uh, you can ask, look here, whether the bug is telling the truth or all ha humbugging. No, I, 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 I uh, you know, I always am consistent in whatever I do, which is very important. And my always zero tolerance, that is also there. I, 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 I have no nonsense and I believe in myself and outspoken. Unfortunately, sometimes those are, you know, it's not good also, but still I can't tolerate. When I see some nonsense, I always stand up and then I say, look here. Those are all constructive, not destructive, which is very, very important. And also we must be humble, humble enough to accept our failures, which I do. So, but I'm a little hot-tempered person by nature. It's very difficult to control me. Very difficult. I have my failures also, which I have to accept that. It's where sometimes, you know, I worked up for like that, but later I realized, my, my God, I shouldn't have done that. Because the word is, as long as word is in your mouth, you can control your, your word. But the moment that goes out, word controls, controls us, which is very important. So therefore, be careful. I always, uh, you know, try to be careful about that, but it's very hard for me. That, that's my weakness, I must tell you. And always be a humble and simple person. Spir spirituality is important. And we meet sometimes, uh, uh, you know, the temples, and I observe still. And I'm also a member of YMBA. I'm also a member of Buddhist All Sidon Buddhist Congress. And I do quite a lot of things, although they are not in public places. Because end of the day, we have to understand that we do a good job. Whatever it is, you know, I'm a, I'm a Buddhist, and she's a Catholic, Christian, and we do have, we do belong, but whatever. I, I firmly believe about nothing is permanent in this life end of the day. Nothing is permanent. Today I'm here. Now, just two minutes I'm going there. Today I'll be here. Tomorrow you might hear that, look here, he is now six feet under the ground. I mean, this is the, this is the noble truth that we need to understand. So, therefore... We need to do a good job of work. It's not only for yourself. It's for the society. It's for the country. And then, uh, you know, no point of criticizing. Now, I'm sorry to tell you, I never, you know, now I, I used to, I mean, so many groups, so many, uh, you know, the social media groups. I never forward any of those things because I feel very sorry for ourselves, my friend. Right? Some people from morning 4 o'clock till 10 o'clock, 10.30, and they keep on forwarding those all young males. Imagine the amount of time we waste and the amount of time, the amount of things that you spread. Why do you want to do that? Why can't you send something good about our country? Of course, you will understand. When I was, uh, I was in uh, UK about a few days ago, I was there about 10, 10 days, and I heard a lot of difficulty that they are going through these days. I mean, imagine the... The electricity energy cost alone has been increased by 50%, my friends, last, uh, last month. 50%. Do they cry? Do they make a huge fuss? No. You've got to understand. If you want to buy a car, new car, you had to wait for a year, I heard. My, my, my brother was telling. One year. Things are not in good shape. But people feel that these problems are the issues are there only in this country. No. It has been there right throughout. This is a global issue. So therefore, my again humble request, I don't do that. This is how, how I practice. So whenever you have something good, yes, you forward. Otherwise, just delete it. Because by doing that, at least no point of uh, blaming uh, the government or politicians. Or any politicians are politicians. Professionals are professionals. So that is very important. So these are the things that I thought that I must uh, share with you. I would have taken a little extra time. And uh, thank you very much for patient listening. And if you feel anything that good, if you can take something back, please do that. And uh, also, I would be very happy, I don't know whether with uh, uh, permission from, uh, you know, the Nilmini, if there are anything that you would like to clarify, or if you say, if you challenge my, uh, my presentation, no, this is wrong, and something, oh, no, you have done this, I, I would be very happy. And that's it. And thank you very much for patient listening, my friends. Thank you.